Why humans age? This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Biologists have long searched for a biological clock in the human body. A diet that cuts caloric intake in half unequivocally doubles the lifespan of all living organisms. Calorie restriction is now widely researched, though it is obviously not a feasible approach to achieving healthy longevity for the masses. Few would have the discipline to limit food intake to just one small meal a day. Regardless of the fact that limited calorie diets prolong life, calorie restriction does not explain why humans age. It only describes a way to slow the rate of aging. If we could determine what causes humans to age, we could stave off or delay so many age-related chronic health problems, even obesity and loss of memory, as well as heart problems and malignancies. There are about 200 theories of why humans age. There is the oxidation theory that the body ages due to increasing assault by oxygen-derived free radicals. There is the wear and tear theory of aging that our body simply wears out. There is the theory that a decline in hormones such as estrogen or testosterone or growth hormone or the brain hormone called melatonin accelerates aging. But none of these theories of aging explain why humans age at three different speeds. During the first two decades of life, during the growth years, we have birthdays, but we aren't biologically aging. Looking at a living cell that is age one or age 18, it looks about the same under a microscope no signs of aging. But beginning in the third decade of life, when childhood growth has ceased, we begin to experience progressive aging. Living cells begin to exhibit an aging change that can be observed under the microscope. Cells in the body begin to accumulate cellular debris called lipofuscin. Over time, lipofuscin accumulates and generates free radicals and gene mutations. The accumulation of garbage in the cell occurs because cell bodies called lysosomes, which produce enzymes that literally cannibalize or digest cellular debris, begin to calcify and rust. Also, cell bodies called mitochondria, which produce cellular energy in the form of adenotriphosphate, begin to rust and calcify. By age 80, only about 5% of mitochondria are functioning. Then in late adulthood, maybe around age 70 years, the rate of biological aging declines. The only theory of aging that explains these three speeds of human aging is the overmineralization theory. During childhood growth, all the calcium in the diet is being directed towards building new bone. All the copper is directed towards building new collagen. All the iron is shuttled to the bone marrow to produce new red blood cells which must be manufactured at the rate of millions of new red blood cells per second. The childhood growth years are characterized as a constant state of shortage of minerals. Children are often anemic and babies are so fatigued, lacking sufficient red blood cells to carry oxygen to the brain, that they need frequent naps. Once childhood growth ceases, the demand for these minerals diminishes. The human body begins to accumulate minerals, particularly calcium, iron, and copper. Rusting and calcification begins. In 1992, biologists discovered in late life, all living organisms experience a decline in the rate of aging, which has been correlated with reaching what is called a steady state of minerals. The barrel is full. Ferritin, the iron storage protein, does not increase further late in life. Females escape this fate, the overaccumulation of minerals, for a time, being the baby carriers, they must be protected from disease. They are biologically protected from overmineralization by monthly loss of iron and copper in their menstrual flow. Estrogen sends a signal to hold calcium in bones, and then calcium and the other minerals are donated to their offspring to build their skeleton. With the onset of menopause, or earlier if undergoing a hysterectomy, iron and calcium begin to accumulate, and women begin to age. Full-grown males, however, have no mechanism to control minerals. They may lose a bit of iron in sweat, but generally males will accumulate excess iron at the rate of one milligram per day of life after full growth is achieved. 
At age 40, a male will have double the iron and four times as much calcium stored in their body and experience double the rate of diabetes, heart disease, and cancer compared to equally aged females. This explains why females live, on average, about five to eight years longer than males. The unusual longevity of the naked mole rat serves as an example of the overmineralization theory of aging. Unlike most other rodents that live three to six years, the naked mole rat lives 35 years. However, this unusual longevity is only achieved by the female naked mole rats, who never stop making babies. They produce about 100 puppies annually, and thus continually donate calcium and iron to their offspring. And the long front teeth on the naked mole rat grow throughout their lives, serving as a sink or a trap for excess calcium. Their teeth are worn away by the burrowing of underground tunnels, which serves to control calcium in their bodies. This theory is further supported by the realization that countries in the world that consume the most red meat and dairy products for iron and calcium have the higher rates of heart disease and cancer. A news report recently published in the New York Times told a story of Greek monks living near Mount Athos who exhibit unusually healthy longevity. Their rates of heart attacks, strokes, and cancer are almost zero, and their rates of Alzheimer's, lung disease, bowel cancer, and bladder cancer are exactly zero. These Greek monks practice fasting. They don't eat red meat and only a small amount of cheese. They catch their fish from the ocean and consume a bit of red wine and olive oil. Recently, an 80-year-old man who came to an eye doctor's office complaining of poor night vision was examined. A picture of his retina at the back of the eye revealed lipofuscin deposits. This man was placed on a uniquely formulated dietary supplement designed to chelate calcium, iron, and copper from the body. After five months of use, retinal photographs revealed this man's lipofuscin deposits at the back of the eyes had declined, which correlated with clinical visual improvement in night vision, side vision, color vision, glare vision, and visual acuity. While not evidence enough yet that such a treatment may one day delay or prevent retinal disease, this case does point to a day sometime in the future when humans will have a photograph taken of the retina to measure lipofuscin levels, or essentially to determine their biological age, and then consume oral mineral chelators to turn back biological time. We enter a new era for mankind. While biological immortality is beyond reach, a theoretical limit on the human lifespan may be a thing of the past. Getting old need not be inevitable. Removal of excess minerals represents a return to biological youthfulness.